to thank everyone uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, to stand and give my presentation and to be the opening batch women of the ACP India chapter. And uh, it's my privilege to uh, not only connect physically with the uh, uh, suggestion about the faculty and the delegates who have come down here, but around more than uh, 15,000 people who are, would be listening to us. And uh, I'll be talking something about the heart. We all are worried about heart. So uh, just talking about the reasons, we know our topic regarding the primary health care, but definitely we'll be talking about the advancements def uh, too, uh, specifically on the stroke and the peripheral artery disease. This is my outline of the presentation. Atherosclerosis, as we all are aware, it triggers the stenosis and the vasoconstriction and uh, the trio, the cerebrovascular disease, the cardiovascular disease, and the asymptomatic or the uh, hidden peripheral arterial disease. So it has been shown uh, the create registry that 30-day mortality rate attributable to ACS was 5.5%. So this atherothrombotic risk is higher in non-ST elevated mm -hmm. uh, acute coronary event and may require the dual uh, uh, um, the, the direct oral anticoagulant drug or the novel anticoagulant drug. Slightly on the pathophysiology, here we just are aware about the endothelial stimulation, elevated platelet aggregation, altered fibrinogen and uh, causing fibrinogen formation and the thrombus and responsible for the atherosclerosis. So if you see this plaque formation, this may activate the coagulation as well as platelet activation. So this dysregulation of the, the coagulative pathway or the fibrinolytic pathway is responsible for the atherosclerotic event in the form of cerebrovascular accident, the cardiovascular accident, about the lower uh, limb uh, arterial stenosis also. In this cascade I was talking about, here we have the, uh, the time immemorial warfarin which we have used. I'll just talk about the anticoagulant. I'll not be discussing about the antiplatelet therapy. We have that is the mainstay of our therapy and then acute coronary syndromes, but also in the peripheral arterial disease. But also the, we have uh, the newer generations, oral anticoagulant, uh, which I'll be talking in the next uh, few minutes. So we know the burden of the stroke. Around one in 100 people worldwide had a stroke and a, uh, a survivors of it. Not only the immediate effect what the stroke produces, but the recurrence of the stroke. What I tell all my patients, this episode you have, revived, you have survived. But what we are worried is the secondary episode, the next episode. You see the chunk. 30% of them have a recurrent chances of stroke. Uh, if we talk about the risk of ischemic stroke, one in five or six individuals have a chance of ischemic stroke. And one in 12, that is a double chance of the hemorrhagic stroke. If we see the etiology, the causes of the ischemic stroke, coming to the ischemic stroke, it could be the small vascular disease, the large vascular disease, the cardiac disease, the cardioembolic stroke, it arounds 42% uh, uh, causing the uh, stroke in the individual. So this is one of the data uh, that when we talked about modifiable risk factors uh, with 90% of people affected by stroke, this was analysis of the 32 countries with 13,447 cases of first stroke. We see the incidence of patients presenting with cardioembolic stroke, presenting with atrial fibrillation, being the cause of stroke is, is nonetheless a word about the peripheral arterial disease. It is third most common manifestation of atherosclerosis. More than 200 million people, at around 12% of adults are affected by it. The asymptomatic PAD the, uh, are more common than the intimate patients presenting with symptoms of intermittent claudication. And the symptomatic patients may have severe limb ischemia. The concomitant CAD with, uh, was seen in 30% of patients and they are high risk of the death due to cardiovascular causes. So the symptomatic peripheral arterial disease patients have major adverse cardiovascular event around 4 to 5% and major adverse limb event around 1 to 10%. If this data of a US population be assumed by 2050, the prevalence is expected to rise up, up around 19 million of peripheral arterial disease, which is not less than the coronary artery disease, etc. 
all the three beds are similar when we talk about the prevalence. If a patient individual presenting with intermittent claudication or symptomatic peripheral uh, vascular disease, not only the, the complication of the uh, peripheral vascular outcomes are there, but other cardiovascular mortality and morbidity can, is also there. And the impact is uh, definitely the mortality is there. This is one of the data of, of the risk assessment following the acute coronary uh, syndrome event. When we were resident, we used to uh, be taught the mortality is maximum the first day, the first week, the first month, and the first year. Yes, that is the data which says. So the dual antiplatelet therapy or the more coagulation, the role of anticoagulant and the antiplatelet is more during the first day. These are certain uh, variables which may decide uh, when to uh, use the dual antiplatelet therapy, which the first months, which may be given a triple drug uh, combination of the two, which we are already giving, and the anticoagulant. And depending upon the bleeding as well as the thrombotic risk, you can uh, uh, assess the uh, 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 when to use in the next forthcoming years. We'll be talking about certain guidelines also. Uh, because of that uh, recent COMPASS trial, which has given us more ease in uh, evaluating these patients. So, coming back to the first slide, what is the role of novel anticoagulant or the direct oral anticoagulant, that is apexiban, rivaroxaban, and we all know because of the COVID era, D-dimer was so much elevated, we have written it, we have got confidence in uh, using these drugs. So, they have been always there in the corner for the prevention of stroke in the atrial fibrillation. So these NOAC include apexiban, dabigatran, uh, rivaroxaban, and endoxaban. They are alternative for, to warfarin for high-risk patients who have inhibitor, whereas dabigatran is a direct thrombin inhibitor. And uh, what are the preventive uh, methodology? We are aware about the secondary prevention, the uh, uh, thromboembolic therapy where we use the dual antiplatelet therapy like aspirin and clopidogrel along with statin blood pressure lowering for the uh, carotid uh, endarterectomy uh, for the acute patient. It's a different scenario. For the prophylaxis or the prevention for the cardiogenic embolism, we have been using warfarin or the target-specific oral anticoagulant. This is uh, for AF team for the, uh, for the structured characterization of the AF. It depends upon the stroke risk, the severity of the stroke, the burden of the stroke, and we use this chart to vascular stroke. I'll just read it out. Uh, I have time. Congestive heart failure, hypertension, diabetes, vascular disease, age carrying, uh, and the uh, female patient having one point. Presence of hypertension, uh, presence of age of more than 75, and prior TIA risk of uh, 0.2. Any patient having more than two is have a, a higher risk of annual stroke and may, re, may be a candidate of uh, profile access. Uh, so if you just go to the evolution or the slide, we have seen there has been lot of lacuna or the, the, our confidence on use of heparin, the newer heparin, the warfarin has been there in the cardiological setup, but the change has come once the approval of the apexiban and rivaroxaban in the management is there. We have lots of study, four major uh, RCT trials, which gives us the confidence of using NOVAC in the in atrial fibrillation. So, uh, but there are certain conditions where warfarin, or as the uh, comoral, which we know, vitamin K antagonist therapy reduces stroke risk by 64% and mortality by 26% and is still commonly used for AF patients worldwide. And uh, they are only treatment. I, I'll just uh, emphasize on the word. They're still the only treatment of AF with rheumatic valvular disease, specifically mitral disease or artificial heart wall therapy. So they are the ones we should still need to continue with warfarin. The problem with, it's a beautiful drug. It, it requires PT-INR monitoring. It's a narrow therapeutic index drug with, uh, uh, which we, they may have a flux unpredictable response and uh, we have a we have to keep on coagulation monitoring and the risk of bleeding as i have uh, mentioned uh, earlier always remains that are there with the newer anticoagulant so we want a miracle drug which may also which may help us to prevent as good as warfarin in preventing stroke prevention but also lesser bleeding complication which could be compared to aspirin so let's uh, see what the guideline says as i have told you earlier 
are warfarin are very good drug when we talk uh, uh, still continue to be uh, drugs used for af if the uh, patients are suffering from valvular heart disease specifically mitral valve disease and the novel anticoagulants are developed as an alternative treatment option for stroke prevention in non valvular af and prevention and treatment and veno thromboembolism certain uh, they have given there are acceptable in circ certain circumstances with certain uh, data is based on single rcts but uh, we we preferably use them when we know they are uh, of uh, valvular origin and non valvular origin you can go for uh, these noacs talking about the pharmacokinetics of the noacs they are more uh, similar uh the, the dabigatran has a maximum renal excretion otherwise most of them have a hepatic excretion the pexidan dose is 5 mg bd dabigatran 150 mg bd or 110 mg bd and doxam m60 mg od and devroxam 20 od or we have been using 10 mg or even 5 bd uh, in the uh, recent practices Uh, in the renal disease, the dose modification may be required. Dabigatran, otherwise, slight reduction in the dose when the EGFR is less than thirty. Uh, in the liver disease, uh, in the stage, uh, if we uh, see the child cook criteria, stage A, all of our of them are safe. But stage B, you need to use with caution. This is the switching. This is always been we are asking students about it. How to switch uh, heparin to a noac or a, a vice versa? So there has to be an overlapping between the two. Once you wish to shift the warfarin, uh, managing on monitoring the therapeutic, uh, uh, keeping them in therapeutic INR and shifting to no novel oral anticoagulant. When we compare the uh, no uh, uh, this novel oral anticoagulant with warfarin. Uh, it, there are i was talking about four major recent trial that the relay trial which used dabigatran the rocket trial which used rivaroxaban uh, the apixaban in the aristotle trial and the doxaban in the engage trial the composite uh, the end point for the stroke and the systemic embolism and it was shown there has been reduction in the uh, event of uh, uh, there was definitely reduction in the stroke uh, episodes and also the all cause mortality was reduced the major bleeding was comparable though there was there and the uh, the the apixaban uh, was found to be superior in prevention of stroke and thromboembolism with overall lower rate of bleeding this was seen this is the embolic stroke of unknown origin where maybe the uh, intermittent af could have been there there was a patient was in sinus rhythm this trial was uh, aborted early with no definite benefit over aspirin uh, in uh, uh, patients who were with, it was compared with rivaroxaban versus aspirin on patient who didn't had af who were in sinus rhythm but presented with unknown cause of stroke certain uh, data i would uh, literature i would like to quote about the uh, th same things so the non valvular af patient yes they uh, the long term use of noac uh, in, instead of uh, vitamin k anticoagulant uh, have seen to be a good choice when uh, so there is no confusion regarding it if we have a better patient profile and uh, we see the af is the cause of stroke we can give the benefit and an ease of shifting our patient from warfarin to novel anticoagulant drug it has to be our faith in the uh, uh, the molecule to initiate it talking in the peripheral arterial disease so uh, the compass trial which was done the comparison of rivaroxaban plus aspirin as compared to the individual drugs have shown there has been reduction in the primary uh, major adverse cardiovascular event though there were uh, major bleeding but not as such uh, which was significant to uh, end the trial and this has given confidence to in, uh, to use uh, to approve noacs in cod there's another uh, study which is uh, the compass uh, the lead uh, which were uh, used only this was a study both used in the acute coronary syndrome patient and the uh, lower extremity arterial disease patient and they have shown a positive response so compass trial the epat trial the voyage pat trial they have concluded like the novel oral anticoagulants in combination with aspirin may provide an alternative in the treatment in peripheral arterial disease so uh, we have lots of data regarding the use of um, 
uh, novel anticoagulant in ischemic heart disease and peripheral artery disease uh, from the Stumpas trial, and hence the guidelines. I have, uh, sir has tipped, uh, asked me to include CAD, I just kept the CAD also here. So here the patient with AF present uh, after PCI in non-ST uh, elevated acute coronary syndrome, feel the oral, uh, if the high risk of uh, stroke is there, high ischemic load is there, the triple therapy is uh, there. Uh, but just you have to weigh the bleeding risk, the ischemic risk needs to be weighed. And after one year, we've all uh, agreed one week or uh, one month of a triple therapy can be given. Depend, uh, weighing the, uh, the, thrombo, uh, uh, the bleeding risk versus the ischemic risk and continuation of oral anticoagulant later. This is by the ESC 2020. And uh, in group of patients without atrial fibrillation, this uh, oral anticoagulant can be given after, uh, after the four, uh, three months of therapy if the, uh, the bleeding risk is low. And in a very high risk, they can be substituted, uh, uh, they can be directly combined with the aspirin. So there is, uh, uh, so we try to find out some papers regarding, like I've talked about recurrence of stroke with without AF, where we didn't un, uh, or uh, undetermined so. So anticoagulation with uh, dual uh, with the direct oral anticoagulant has not been superior to aspirin for stroke prevention in patient with embolic stroke of unknown origin. So aspirin is uh, is to be continued in that subgroup of patient. Uh, talking about the recent ACC and the AHK guidelines, antiplatelet therapy is the mainstay of treatment of acute and chronic arterial disease involving the coronary and the peripheral beds. Recurrent thrombotic events occur in one in 10 patients in the first year if following acute coronary syndrome. In spite of the best of the possible PCIs and the use of potent P2 white well inhibitors, in the chronic phase, so that has been uh, uh, accepted in the chronic phase, the COMPASS trial reveals reduction in the NACE with the combination of a very low dose Revoroxaban plus aspirin, 100 milligram, dual pathway inhibition. So paving uh, a way for use of aspirin in other than volvular heart disease patient presenting with AF. For the patient of uh, non-cardioembolic stroke and transient ischemic stroke, Single or a dual antiplatelet therapy has a role. There is a, uh, no role of anticoagulant except novel anticoagulant accepted there. So the ESC 2020 for the patient, just summing up my talk, uh, non-vitamin K or uh, anticoagulant for secondary stroke prevention in platelets with atrial fibrillation who are newly detected AF, known AF, obviously take on NOAC. If the patients are in sinus rhythm, keep monitoring and continue with the antiplatelet therapy. They have not been shown to be any beneficial. So this is the patient uh, of, uh, with AF eligible for oral anticoagulation. If they have uh, the prosthetic mechanical wall or a valvular heart disease, there is, there is no role of anticoagulation. Uh, you go for the CHAD vascular score according to the, uh, if it is more than one in male and more than two in female, the risk of, uh, uh, thrombosis is more, then you can think or class two indication for giving OAC or uh, one A for OAC. So the antiplatelet therapy is preferred for lesion characterized by atherosclerosis and endothelial injuries, whereas the anticoagulant agents are favored by uh, cardiogenic embolism and highly thrombophilic condition. To conclude, non-vitamin K antagonist oral anticoagulants have shown <laughs> to warfarin in the prevention of stroke or systemic embolism. And uh, as we have seen the data from the various studies, 19% significant stroke reduction, 50% hemorrhagic stroke reduction with similar uh, ischemic stroke when they compare with the old age warfarin. So my last slide. So NOAC are the effective and safer in Asians than in non-Asian. So in prevention of atherosymbolic events in adults with CAD or PAD or high risk of ischemic events, we have an option of uh, using uh, NOVAC. And the concept of treatment targeting both coagulation pathways and arterial thrombosis is uh, there. So the, we have to take out the patient who can benefit. High risk for recurrent ischemia with following characteristics like uh, polyvascular disease, symptomatic CAD, and addition.
Thank you, Dr. Anubha, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, before we open this for discussion, uh, I have a small question. So uh, the bleeding risk, as you said, is lower than avafrin or the vitamin K antagonist uh, in the, uh, with the DUX or the novel anticoagulant. But if the patient does present with bleeding, maybe GI bleeding or something, and then how do you stop it? And then do you restart with the same dose? Do you alter the dose? Or uh, how do you, uh, I mean, advise? Yes, sir. Uh, the definitely, the bleeding risk is definitely the same. I won't say it is lesser, but major bleeding, even the ICS has been similar to the porphyrin. And uh, the, there are uh, antagonists which we can give for reversal of. Uh, given when uh, they can be administered to these group of patients. So the reversal is also there. And for restarting, uh, definitely we have to reassess because uh, uh, the, the bleeding risk is already there. So we have to reassess with them if, we, uh, if the chances of high ischemic risk is there, we can reduce the dose and we can reintroduce rather than uh, same dose. Because as we have seen, the trials also very low. 20 milligram is the dose, but the, uh, the recommendation of they have given 2.5 milligram plus 100 milligram of uh, aspirin, which is approved for chronic uh, systemic vascular disease. So the dose reduction can be good option, and obviously the acute uh, bleeding has to be. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nuba, for nicely telling us that how the noise can be placed and uh, the use is expanding and the offlet with the COVID. It has opened the Pandora yes, box sir. for NOAX and we all have been using. We have got and, uh, confidence in using Yes. So, and uh, cutting down the cost also of NOAX in India has uh, pushed their use to a larger extent. So, we move on to the next session. Thank you. And uh, the next... Uh,